Uh, my name is Tavis Sparrow. I am a senior technical business manager from Icron. We are the USB extension technology guys. And uh, what we're talking about today is the relevance of USB 2 extension in the USB 3 world. So quite often what we talk about day to day with uh, engineers and designers is uh, and we've got some new USB 3 widgets that we're deploying. We need to extend some of those signals and there's this anxiety to do that in the USB 3 domain, to offer all that bandwidth in an extension solution. Our connection with SDVOE here is kind of taking stock of the available bandwidth we have to work with with these networks and kind of making an impression upon you that USB 2 extension is still alive and well and certainly something you should consider deploying despite connecting to USB 3 devices. So, so a little bit of history about who we are. Uh, as of uh, 2021, we're now part of the analog devices family. So a little bit of a change in our color and our logo, but we're still the same Icron group. Uh, we still develop product the same way, we support it the same way, we sell it the same way. So there's no changes um, with really uh, the Icron experience with our customers who are familiar with us. Uh, we like to think we are the leading uh, supplier of USB extension solutions in the world, and we've been doing it since the, pretty much the dawn of USB itself. Uh, our focus is uh, dominated by Pro AV, but we also get into medical um, and industrial applications, government and military as well too. And the, the brand that you might be familiar with is Extreme USB. And what you, Extreme USB is really trying to embrace is not only our proprietary extension algorithms and IP, uh, but we spend a, a tremendous amount of resources and effort into regression testing, interop testing, uh, to make sure that our extension solutions are working with the devices that you guys are working with. Uh, and in, a, in an attempt to future-proof that as well too. So as you're installing these things, they're going to work for the next several generations of, of those networks as they evolve. And of course, we are the transparent USB 2 extension technology that's part of the SDBOE ecosystem. So USB 3 today, it, it, it is definitely the gold standard in, in, in interconnection of devices, particularly uh, high bandwidth cameras, high resolution cameras and, and multi-channel audio devices, uh, as well as uh, content ingest and capture for uh, things like Google Meet Rooms and things of that nature. But there's a tremendous amount of, of, of effort and time spent on trying to get these things to talk to each other with cables that are reliable. You may have to carefully consider where you deploy a given box so that it's within range of that limited cable distance. And uh, a lot of that can go away with extension. So Semtec uh, produces the AVT, uh, AVXT uh, chipsets to, to drive the SDBOE platforms from a, an audio and video perspective. They also provide a convenient way to get into the HID devices for KVM applications. So uh, that's a baseline feature in that Semtec offering. You can attach your keyboard and mouse to it. It's already baked into that, and you can deploy that across your SDBOE network. When you add our Icron ASIC, our, our device, into those platforms, we kind of open up and unlock all the other USB 2 peripherals that you can run across those uh, extenders and across that network. So, bandwidth limitations. Obviously, as we kind of climb the ladder with elegant outcomes, there's going to be a, a penalty or a, a cost of bandwidth associated with that. And a lot of this stuff is, is, is pretty intuitive. Higher the resolution, higher the frame rate, more audio channels, what have you, the more bandwidth you need. Um, SDVOE, of course, leverages 10 gigabit um, networks uh, for an uncompromised audio and video experience up to 8K for multi-link applications. Uh, and they, they go to great lengths to carefully manage that bandwidth to make sure it does not exceed 9 gig across that network. USB 3 Gen 1, which is probably the most popular speed that you'll see, super speed will run, uh, on a camera uh, that can support up to 4K of streaming content, runs at 5 gig. So the dilemma is, is that if you are going to attempt to deploy USB 3 extension across a network and run SDVOE, it's going to top out at about 14 gigabit. It's not going to work. So the solution? Deploy USB 2. We only need about a half a gig to do what we need to do on that LAN on top of the SDVOE payload. We fit in under that 10 gig uh, limit quite nicely. So what we're going to talk about in the next couple of slides is just kind of illustrate at the very highest level of um, just some 
some common sense type things that, that, that one should consider that, you know, despite connecting to these USB 3 cameras uh, and, and devices, it's uh, there's a strong likelihood that the users and your customers are consuming that information as a USB 2 experience already. And we'll kind of explain why. Real simple graphic here. What we're trying to illustrate here is that for a, a, a given family of cameras and audio devices, what kind of USB speed is required to, to facilitate those connections? And really, from a video perspective, everything up to 1080p can be served by a USB 2 connection. Going beyond 1080p, of course, we, we start needing that 5 gig of bandwidth that we get from USB 3. From a soft codec point of view, for a collaboration and conferencing, the majority of the clients out there and platforms out there are going to top out at a resolution of 720p on a good day. This is for streaming content. You can go higher resolution for static images for desktop sharing, but what we're talking about here is the camera content. Teams can do 1080p uh, in the right situation. But the message here, of course, is this is all very well served by USB 2. You don't need USB 3 to get these results out of the clients. And this is probably where most users are going to uh, develop their instincts about the, the overall experience. Even if you have that camera streaming 4K to the soft codec, everybody else in the audience is going to see it as a 720p resolution output. Right? So getting into the camera itself, 4K cameras, 6K cameras, 8K cameras, uh, cameras that ship with extraordinarily long cables. What's going on? And I think there's a lot of marketing that goes into some of this stuff, um, but we want to kind of demystify this a little bit. And again, we want to show that USB 2 is not a compromise in the extensions, extension domain. Let's talk about those cameras, 4K, 6K, and 8K cameras. What, is, what does it mean? So often, um, you know, we use these terms to kind of quickly uh, communicate a level of performance uh, on a particular product. But in a lot of cases, what they're talking about with 4K and 6K resolution is the image sensor inside the camera itself, not necessarily the content that's coming out of it. Particularly cameras that have AI or ML functions in them, where they're doing processing inside the camera head, they'll use a, a large image sensor to do that, perform their analytics and algorithms, and then output something much lower resolution, often in the 1080p uh, space. Um, that family of 4K and 6K image sensor cameras can still do that with a USB 2 interface. Levels. For output resolution, um, in the UCC space, there is a small family of 4K output capable cameras, for sure, and it is growing. Uh, and in order to get that native 4K uh, uh, stream out of those cameras, you're going to need USB 3 super speed at 5 gig to do that. 8K cameras, it's more of a DSLR kind of thing that you see the 8K cameras being marketed out there, and they can certainly capture an 8K, but that's usually to local flash inside the device to be downloaded at a later point. You're not streaming 8K video out of those devices through those uh, USB ports. Um, cameras that can do that, where they're capturing at 8K and simultaneously streaming 4K out, are doing so over that USB 3 interface or HDMI, but you're not getting 8K streaming out of those devices. So to illustrate things about um, the AI and the smart cameras, um, you know, they're, they're working with a large canvas with a large Im image sensor here, and it's kind of representing what a 6K image sensor can take into the camera head itself through optics. And then after we process and do some smart framing, uh, they can get 1080p, a subsection of that image sensor, delivered out of, out of, the, out of the port as content. And this, in, in its simple terms, is a very elegant digital pan and zoom function with no pixelation or compromise of video quality in order to do this. Also for doing target tracking, gaze tracking, um, maybe isolating speakers in the conference room. Again, we like to use a large 6K image sensor to do that, but we're going to have some sort of lower resolution that's actually delivered to the host. That can be very well served by USB 2. Cable links. So in USB 3, this is probably one of the biggest challenges is how do I get all this great content out of my USB 3 camera and I've only got one to two meters at best to work with. Well, there are a growing number of USB 3 cameras, particularly ones that are terminating to type C, that have a kit cable included in the box. Some of these kit cables can be at distances up to five meters. So to some who aren't 
um, uh, looking kind of behind the curtain about what's going on, it looks like an extraordinarily long cable that they can't get anywhere else. What is happening? Well, those type C cables uh, are staked out and pinned out to serve only USB 2 traffic. So when the host is connecting to those USB 3 cameras, they only have a USB 2 communication path to work with, and that camera is now running in USB 2 fallback at 720p, at 1080p, over this long type C cable. There is no USB 3 communication in those long cables. And again, this is kind of my comment is, you know, a lot of customers are consuming that USB 3 um, content as USB 2 payload in the first place. So it's a simple stack up. Um, customers are, are, are probably consuming the content at USB 2 anyways. Um, deploying USB 2 uh, in the SWE ecosystem can facilitate that. And you know, if you hadn't even kind of prepared your customer for this, this shift, they probably wouldn't even notice it, particularly on a soft codec experience. So um, with, with limited bandwidth to work with, there definitely is a home for USB 2 extension with new USB 3 technology. Thanks, folks. Any questions?